Well, no, I, I got this going, so I should be good now. Okay, I was worried there for a while. I thought I was going to slide off that bench. So before I uh, get started in tonight's lesson, I want to uh, share with you, in case you haven't heard, you haven't seen on Facebook, you haven't talked to anybody about the, uh, the news level, the next step that we're going to at uh, uh, diversity. I believe, actually, this is just just the edge of the step. You know how you can just kind of put your toe on the edge of the step or you can put your whole foot on? Right now we're just barely on it. But we're getting ready to go to that step and then the next step. Many times in, in church and especially in our churches we've grown and because I have to work a, a, another job besides this, I don't all, always have the time and the uh, of what it takes to be able to meet everybody where they're at and to, to talk with people and, and to develop those, those close bonds that really we need to have as a church. And so what we're doing is starting next week we're introducing what we can, you can call them small groups or cell groups, whatever you want to. We're starting off with two, but but we don't believe that two is going to be nearly, nearly enough for even probably a short amount of time, uh, let alone a long amount of time. So our goal probably in the next uh, six to eight months is to have at least five groups within the next six months. And uh, these groups are what is, uh, again, you can call them small groups, cell groups. They're really kind of the same thing. We did them before, but we're doing them different this time. Because before we had a whole list of rules and regulations and all these things we had to do. And you had to, everybody had to be part of this, and you had to do that. We're, we're just not going to, we're not about rules and regulations. We're about freedom. And so, uh, starting this Sunday, there will be two classes. And I, uh, for those of you who are attending, uh, or have been attending, I've already assigned you uh, classes. And it's because I want to make sure that, that we have everybody in the same, same thing. Y'all get to stay in the same class, by the way. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have two classes. The, the one will still be led by Shirley and Jenny in here. They're on Ephesians, and, and many of you are going to stay in here for that. Uh, Ryan is going to step in with Maya in what was the young adult group and going to be leading another class in the back, uh, which right now is going to be talking about relationships and boundaries. And so I have picked out who I thought needed to be in that class too. <laughs> and because we want to make sure that parents and kids aren't in the same class, and uh, and it, as the, the church has grown, we also wanted to make sure that exes weren't in necessarily the same class. That's why I said, we're going to need a whole lot of classes. <laughs> but, uh, so see me after church, and I'll tell you uh, which class I have you in. If I don't have you in one, then I'll, I'll kind of uh, assign it in. Uh, but it, it's going to be a great thing because these small groups, uh, involve, uh, they create an atmosphere for intimacy, which the church many times misses because we come together on Sunday morning and we have a good time. We come together on this night and we have a good time. But even in fellowship events, many times we have the same group sitting at the same table and, and people don't get to really know each other. And so these are kind of like, you know, uh, we might even call them Vegas groups because what happens, what happens in there stays in there. And so... Yeah. Uh, some of you can identify with the Vegas part real well for some reason. <laughs> uh, but these are a great opportunity, and it's not just for the people that are here, but it's also a great way whenever people come in. We've had many people come in, and they don't feel connected, and so they wander around. And you, many of you have been in churches like that before, where you come in and there's just not a connection with anybody, and so I don't wander back out and go on to the next church and all that. We don't want that to ever happen again. Right. And we've had people that have kind of worn out and fell back into old behavior stuff simply because they weren't connected. And how many of you know a family needs to be connected? Whenever you're in a family, there, it requires a connection. So I want to encourage you, if you're not in Sunday school or haven't been, we're not even going to call it Sunday school anymore because that, that old uh, mindset, if you would. So we're gonna, these are going to be small, small groups. Don't misunderstand. We're still going to have Christian education. And it's going in a, in a whole new, wide area that's going to create lots of uh, education and some needs that we've been getting lots of requests for. And so, I hope, I, I just wish y'all were as excited as about it. We are. I can, just, we are. I can just hardly contain myself. And so, it's a great opportunity because I see it as a great opportunity for growth. Right now we're running maybe an average on Sunday mornings in Sunday school of about 25 to 30 people all combined. And so my goal is in six months in Sunday school, we will be running 60 to 80 just in Sunday school. And I don't believe that's unrealistic to do. And so as these uh, butt out, the, the first year they're going to be held in, I, I like this term, I thought it was pretty neat, I put it in the letter to the, to the leaders. 
at this time, all the classes, all the small groups would be held on campus. Yeah, I like that term, on campus. It just kind of gives it. See, for some of you feeling old, you can say, now you're back on campus again. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and while we're there, happy birthday to Bonnie and to Shannon. Bonnie's was yesterday, and today is Shannon's. Uh, this is a uh, this is a month full of birthdays. There was Austin's and Gray's and Shannon's and uh, hers and Shirley's is coming out this next week. And uh, Catherine's, I believe, is this month. Is it not? Uh, Mom's was this month. So I'm. I said, "What are y'all trying to do? Break me? I should have bought stock at Hallmark." Yes. So said, My time is, it's all over with. So, so anyhow, this is a great opportunity to get involved and, and to do things. And so, and then as we spread out from this year, then we'll be going, we'll be moving these groups where they're not just meeting on campus, but these groups will actually be meeting in homes in different areas of the city. And I would love us to see, even see something birth where we're having small groups meet in Claremore and Bartlesville and places like that. I believe that, that we have a, a wide Owasso, <laughs> Talala, Uluga, you know, all those places that God has forgotten about that we can remind Him. <laughs> so, say amen if you're excited about it. Amen! All right, if you heard somebody not say amen, you give me their name off of the back. So, Michael, I only have 30 minutes now because I promised you last week I was going to let you out here, except for on, in, on prayer nights, I'm going to let you out by 8 o'clock. So, so bear with me. We've got to fly through this. And I made my notes large enough that I can read them. And so, tonight we're still continuing the series about being freedom, having freedom in Christ. And I, I may steer back to some of the the format that I develop up, that I pulled offline, but right now I'm sticking with my own format because I want to go with it as God gives me revelation, and yeah. you can take that revelation, you can add to your revelation, and hopefully, you know, the way that these things should work is that I give you my revelation, but you have some revelation of your own to add to it, because that's what gives birth and gives life to the Word. Yes. And so James in chapter 4, and verse 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's real easy. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And so, one of the first areas that if we really want to be free, I shouldn't say one of the first areas, one of the many areas, if we want to be free in Christ is that we have to submit to God. And we can sit here tonight and talk about how great it is and how easy it is to submit to God, but when the rubber meets the road, sometimes it's real hard to submit to God whenever God isn't doing what we wanted Him to do. Come on, Master. Now, in Pentecostal and charismatic circles, we have grown up with this, this thing of, you know, just rebuking the devil all the time. But there's nothing wrong with rebuking the devil. God gave you power and authority to rebuke the devil. You should be rebuking the devil. If you ain't rebuking the devil, you need to start. But, you can rebuke the devil all day long, but according to this scripture, until you submit to God, rebuking the devil does you no good. Right. And so there are many times that we'll go through and we're not free in Christ because we're just rebuking the devil. We're just binding and we're losing and binding and losing all that, but we're never submitting. And it's a hard thing. Sometimes it's easy to submit to God. When there's a flow of the Spirit in the service and God is moving in many directions and, 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 and there, there's, there's worship and all that, man, it's easy just to submit to God and just kind of go with the flow. Isn't it? I mean, just, we can just, just move in. But what about those times whenever God calls us into submission, but we don't want to submit? Oh, no. Now, maybe none of y'all ever deal with that, but I deal with it on a regular basis because there's times that the Lord deals with me. There's times I want to say things that the Lord tells me I have to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Isn't it hard sometimes to submit to God whenever God, whenever God's trying to get you to say, Lord, they need to hear what I have to say. And sometimes it's not always a bad thing. One of the things that we have to understand is even whenever we might think it might be in or it might be good, when God tells us to be quiet, we need to be quiet. Amen? How many of you know that that's the hard part about submitting to God whenever God is telling us to be quiet? I said, Lord, but I need to say this. I have a, uh, I, I can say it's my closer back there. I, one of the things with having a, uh, a special needs child is that their, their mind does, <laughs> doesn't always move as fast as what everybody else does. And so if I tell Bonnie, Bonnie, I want you to stand to your feet, Bonnie's pretty fast about standing up. She didn't stand. No, I, didn't. I said, if I, if I told her to. <laughs> she would, it's kind of like Mother May. you got to make sure you say the right thing in front of However, with a special needs child, somebody that's gone through some brain injury or trauma or something, 
You can say something, but it may take about 10 seconds to lay on them for them to understand what you're saying. And so for them to be able to stand up, sometimes they're just sitting there and look at you like you're crazy. And I said, oh. The same thing happens sometimes when we have been spiritually abused. Now go with me on this. How many of you know there is such a thing as spiritual abuse that happens in the church all the time? When we've been spiritually abused, when the Spirit of God speaks to us, we may not be as quick to stand up and submit as we did whenever we, before we went through all that abuse. Right. There was a time probably in all of our lives where when God spoke to us, there was no hesitation. We just got up and we said, okay, Lord, he said do it, I'll do it. And now sometimes we, because of some other stuff, we start to question, and this, this might be a really good word for somebody, we start questioning, am I really sure this is God? How do I know this is God? Well, we just went through these scriptures last week. We submit ourselves to God. We transform our mind by the renewing of His Word in our hearts. And then it says, and then you will know what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so, how many of you know that many times Christians are real slow in, in responding because we're hoping that maybe this isn't God's will? Right. Yeah. <laughs> because this sounds really crazy to me. Why would the Lord say this? Why would God tell me to do that? It doesn't make any sense. So, we've got to submit to God. That's the first thing. Turn, look at somebody and say, you've got to submit to God. Now I'm going to get to this other scripture in a minute. You know, there, there's been a, 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 a place, you know, there are some things, I want you to understand, there are some things in the Word that are, are, are spirit and life, and there are some things in this Word that deal with culture. And so I'm, I'm trying to make it. And so I, one of the things that irritates me most is some of these good old right-wing people talking about wives submitting to their husbands and, and, and all this stuff, you know, Better be careful on some of that stuff. Slaves submit to your masters, all that. I mean, you gotta better be careful. And so we've got to submit to God, but there is also and and leaders and I, and and y'all probably know them. Well, I don't teach on this in a lot. Very rarely do I teach on this. But there is a godly authority that God establishes in the church. Yes. And so there's been some people that, that have trouble. And used to, this was hard for me. There were some people that just would not submit to the authority of the pastor. And it just aggravated me. Now, I've dealt with some pastors that, I mean, there, you didn't have any choice whether you submitted or not. I mean, they would get up in your face. They would tell you how it was. They would, you know, bless God, I'm the pastor here. You're going to do this. You know, I don't, don't necessarily do that. i got other people stand behind me while I tell you. <laughs> But what I discovered is that people will never be able to submit to my authority as pastor if they can't submit to God's authority as God. Yes, sir. And so I'm wasting my time sometimes. And, and man, I, if I could learn this about 20 years ago, I'd have less wrinkles and more hair. <laughs> because there was times where I, would just, I couldn't understand why I want people to commit and submit. That was my thing. Why don't they commit and submit? And, and all of a sudden, it, it's been a few years ago that the Lord b began to deal with me and said, if they won't commit and submit to me, why should they commit and submit to you? So, we've got to submit to God. That's part of being free in Christ is you don't, if you're going to be free in Christ, you've got to submit to Christ. And so, submit to God and then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's where many people are banging their head against the wall. They're rebuking the devil, but they're not submitting yet. And sometimes it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's something great that God's wanting to do in our lives and we're just saying, oh Lord, I'm not sure it's you. Lord, if it's you, give me a sign. Hey, God, open up this door. Well, Lord, give me a sign if I'm supposed to walk through the door. Do you realize how stupid we are sometimes? Yeah. Whenever God's just laying it all out, and God's trying to say, I can make you free. And we're saying, well, Lord, if you really want me to be free, let me know. Yeah. Really? Well, I'm going to go on because I'm about 30 minutes. 20 now. Hey, we're going by my watch. <laughs> I had one pastor that tell, tell me, he said, I never get worried when people look at their watch. It's when they take it off and start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we're going to go on to what I was talking about. Hebrews chapter 13. I'll give you just one turn down. I'll make that last one so fast, but it was a short one. I figured you could memorize it. Hebrews chapter 
13 and verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves, for they watch over your souls, as they must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Now, here he's talking about submitting to those that have authority over you. Now, I want you to understand this. People should never abuse authority. Yeah. Never. There's never an excuse for abusing authority. And if you've been in the church for any amount of time, at some point you've probably seen people abuse the authority that they have. If you've been in a workplace, you've seen people abuse the authority that they have. There's some people that carry around their position as a... I told myself I wasn't going to go here, but I am. Now, I grew up in a church that I didn't wear a white shirt tonight, so body wore for me. But I grew up in a church, and Shannon's all the way this tonight, so he's, he's there. I grew up in a church that, you know, the only, you didn't wear any color shirt except black pants and white shirts. I mean, we all look like Mormons, but that was, it, it was what the Church of God did, and the Pentecostal church and all that, because we didn't want to be flowery and, and bright. <laughs> we wanted to, but we weren't allowed. <laughs> And so, but people begin to, I watch pastors, and you could tell by the way that they dressed that somehow or other, they thought the way that they dressed commanded authority. Now, you'll probably never see me do this. I think only once in the last 13 years have I probably preached in jeans. And I don't remember what the reason was. I think it was Casual Sunday that I, that, uh, that had my daughter twice. She's been counting, so, so twice I wore jeans to church. <laughs> oh, it's not like Brian said from back in the years. Y'all pay attention. You're so good. <laughs> but the point is, I should command the same authority by the power that I walk in, whether I'm in jeans or in a suit. Come on. Come on. Man. It has nothing to do with the way that I dress. I dress because I believe that it honors God the way that I dress whenever I come to church. That's just, it's my old teaching and, and there, there's signs that all of us and, and it's not about, I don't think that people, I think you should dress however you want to dress when you come to church. Be comfortable, enjoy yourself. You're not here to impress anybody else. You're here to worship God. This is my thing. Okay, it, it's my thing. So I want you to understand whenever I talk about this, it is not a beating up on you. If you want to wear t-shirts and shorts to church in the middle of the winter time, I don't care. It's, it's as long as you get here, that's what I'm interested about. I don't care if you wear flip flops. I'd rather you leave the two tops at home, but you can wear flip flops. <laughs> We've had some come in a few times. I thought, well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> there have been people, I, I, normally I don't say this, but there, there's been a few times that the Lord reminded me it was a confirmation church, I am gay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so there was nothing about that that did anything for me. <laughs> but now we're in this age and I'm, I'm watching, I have friends that are doing this, I, I see it on TV, that it's in, people are moving into this clerical thing where they think they have to wear a clerical collar everywhere that they go. So people know, I wore one of those. I have a picture with me in one, in one of those. You'll never see it. But, but number one, a tie is choking it up. I want to wear something that comes all the way up there and choking. And number two, if the authority that I carry carries by the way that I dress rather than the way that I live, there's something wrong with my life. Oh, And probably, I don't know if you can identify with this, but there have been times in my life that I've said or done things in public that I did not want anybody in that store to know that I was a minister of the Lord. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever done that. Y'all just pray for me. But the Word does say that we're to, we're to... That's part of having freedom in Christ whenever you can serve under people and with people and still have freedom. That's part of the freedom that God's given you in Christ. I came up with that scripture at Honestly, I was copying and pasting scriptures in here and somehow or other I have in here John 8, 32, but y'all know that you shall know the truth and the truth shall be Okay, it doesn't have anything to do with prostitute in China, but it's in my notes, so there you go. 
<laughs> now, 1 Peter in chapter 5 and verse... I'll give you just a moment. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Some of you have iPods and little pads. I don't know if you get there faster than what I can say, so I don't worry about you. Likewise, and, and for the, this is what happens when you're trying to pull these together late at night. This is in King James, and I always have trouble reading King James because I think in NIV, and I speak in New English version. So, however it comes out, that's what it is. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, that's what it says. Yay. All of you. Be subject one to another. Be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yes. How many of you know the best part of being free in Christ is not only you submitting to authority, but the word says here we need to submit to one another. And then he says, don't go around talking about how great you are because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's why it says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may walk. Exalt you yes. in due time. How many of you know that freedom in Christ knows that God's going to get you? Now hear this. This is the probably the most important thing you're going to hear tonight. God is going to get you to the right place at the right time with the right people. You just got to keep submitting to God and trust that He's going to get you there. And the whole lot of times, the reason we haven't got there before wasn't the fact that God didn't want to get there. We're like the children of Israel. We've been wandering around complaining because, and sometimes you'll discover you were complaining while something was right in front of you. As a matter of fact, you know, one of the things is I was putting together this small group idea, whenever I called Shannon, I said, there's only one thing that I'm thinking about is the fact that this has been right in front of me the whole time and I haven't seen this for six months and I've been praying for a solution to this. You know why? Because sometimes I was too busy complaining to God. I don't know why this isn't working. I don't know why this isn't. I don't know how I can use this person and not use this person. I don't know how. And all of the time it was right there. And it opened up so many doors. And it will open up so many doors. And so part of this was preaching it myself. He says here, be clothed in humility. How many of you know that that gives you freedom in Christ? When you're clothed in humility. When you're not just covered, but you're literally clothed in humility. So I walk around humble. I'm not, I don't think that I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm just, just walking around humble. There, you know what? There, there are times that I listen to people, and there are people that know so much more word than I know. You know. There, there are people that, you know, I'm, I'm always humble. There, there, there are two people that, that really minister friends that kind of keep me, me humble. Stacy can outdo me on music any day of the week. He can, he can sit down, he can play anything, he can run right through it, and he can shout and go back to the same key. You know, if I shout, I'm still huffing and puffing when I get down. I can't even see the keys, let alone get right back to the same key. And my pastor friend, Randy Morgan, he can quote Genesis or Revelation and not even take a breath. You know, he can just do all that stuff. You can talk to him about something and he'll say, well, you know, that." and I'll say, that's the Old Testament, brother. I can barely remember the name Abraham. <laughs> it keeps me humble to deal with people like that because it reminds me of where I need to be. You should always surround yourself with people, not only that encourage you, but people that challenge you yes. to get to the next place. Yes. If you're not challenged, and, and some, you know, what happens is there are people that like to be challenged, and then there are people that get upset and run the moment they get challenged. Oh, you've got to learn not to be intimidated by God and by God's people. And as a pastor, there are people that come into this congregation that know more work. Some of them have more education than I do. Some of them are probably more talented and more anointed. It just so happens God put me here, but I'm glad that he put all the rest here too. And you know what? It gives you great freedom in Christ when you're not intimidated by the fact that somebody else might know more about something than what you know. I heard somebody say this about one of our presidents, and I don't name his name, but it was George Bush. They said that it's not that... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> no, say it out loud. Said it's not that he's the smartest man, and we, we knew that. But he surrounded himself with people that were very intelligent. That's my secret to pastoring. It's not that I'm the smartest person in the world. I just surround myself with people that know how to make me look smart. That, that's, that's part of, of working. Is, it's not the fact that you, when they were talking about being humble to one another, it means recognizing the gifts in other people. 
recognizing that you have gifts that I don't have, you have anointings that I don't have, but what happens when we all come together and we all bring those anointings and we all bring those gifts together, then God can do great things. And it's not that I have to be able to do everything. Well, that's one of the things where pastors fail many times is they think they've got to be able to do everything. I discovered a long time ago I can't do everything. There's a lot of things I'm not good at and a lot of things you don't want me even trying. That's why God gives different gifts in the church. And that's why we can all, when we humble ourselves from one another, we appreciate each other's gifts. We're not intimidated by each other's gifts. We appreciate each other's gifts. And that's what gets us to the next level. That's what, what gets us free in Christ. You can never be free when you're intimidated. There are people that can outpray me. Yeah. The, uh, what was that? Good Christian, GCB. You know, when she said she just out Christianed you. There, there, are, there are people that can outpray me. I'm not intimidated by that. You know, I, I go, sometimes I go to conferences and people think because they can pray louder than me, they're better than me. Uh uh. How many of you know that God hears the same prayers? You shouldn't be intimidated because somebody can pray longer than you can. Otherwise, you can never get with Heidi. That's right. Lord knows. Hallelujah. We almost starved to death that first banquet when we had her pray. <laughs> you can't be intimidated by somebody that can sing better than you can, that Shannon can get up and make the whole church look like we just turned into the first black church of North Coast. You know, people are shouting everywhere. And everything. Yeah. You can't be intimidated whenever you try to build a wall and every wall you fall, you will fall down and I can come in and throw something out for two minutes and it looks like... You know, we appreciate each other's gifts. It doesn't mean that anybody's more anointed. It doesn't mean that anybody's more important, but because we humble ourselves with one another, we appreciate one another. And it's not that we haven't all made mistakes, because even those gifts that you're looking at have all made mistakes, have all had bad attitudes, have all done all this... How many of you know that we can't afford to start judging other people because of their bad attitudes and all that? Otherwise, the Lord's going to have to deal with us about our bad attitude, and then we're back at square one. All right. Ooh, I got ten minutes. John 16, 22. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read it to you. It's just one, one short verse. And you now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice. And your, your joy, no man will be able to take from you. I want to talk to you. This part is about if you want to be free, you've got to keep your focus. Yes. You've got to keep your focus. Does anybody in here ever, you get your focus going and you, and you know what you're supposed to do and God gives you vision and God gives you, and then all of a sudden something or somebody comes along and gets your focus off whack and all of a sudden you think, yes. Ah. Yes. Now how am I going to, and all of a sudden, You've got to learn that don't let somebody else take your joy from you and don't let somebody else distract you. Yes. There are people, as a matter of fact, you know, as pastoring, I can tell you, oftentimes I'm sitting up here and I watch distractions go all throughout the service. Sunday morning, Wednesday nights, whatever, there are distractions. And I wish I could say it's always kids. Many times it's adults. You know, we've had people that, you know, love on one and all dear church. We've had people that sometimes when they would back whenever we would stand and do things that were inappropriate with each other. You should never do that when you know that my mother is sitting behind you. Because <laughs> I'll hear about it. She may not something say anything right now, but I promise you, I'll hear. It. We've had Papa Bears. Playing with each other's beards. And <laughs> just an attractive thing. And there will be people all in worship, but all of a sudden they look down. It's better to watch me chase a rabbit than it is to watch other people. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Great testimony for sitting on the front row. We get there. Very few distractions when you sit up here. And then, Isaiah 26 and verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind remains focused on you because he remains in you. You can stay free in Christ when you stay focused because it guards your heart, guards your mind. It helps you stay focused. And so, how many of you know you can't be free if you ain't in peace? I know I use that, but you can't be free when you're not walking in peace. So you've got to keep your mind stayed upon Jesus. There's an old song that we used to sing, I got my mind stayed on Jesus. You've got to keep your mind stayed on there, even when the things of this world are coming at you and try to distract you and try to pull you down and try to distract you and pull you back and, and all these things. They're trying to make you think, and there will be times in everybody's ministry and everybody's life where the enemy tries to come in and tries to make you think, you know what, they're done with you. They don't need you anymore. You don't need to be at that church. You need to go somewhere else where you're appreciated. You know what I have found is people that do that are no more appreciated at the next church than they were at the first one. And by the time they go through seven churches and they come in, this is what, what always gets me when people come in my office and say, I just don't get it. I've been in ten churches in the last five years and every one of them preached me like this. There's a common denominator here. It's you. you got to pull back and say, okay, Lord, i got to keep peace. I've got to get my mind stayed upon you. Even when people treat me bad. I want you to understand that people aren't just going to treat you bad outside the church. Many times people are going to treat you bad inside the church. But you've got to keep your mind stayed on Jesus no matter how people treat you. How many of you know, I, I've had people say, well, I can't come here because so-and-so comes. You've got to come here because your mind is stayed up on Him. You didn't come for anybody else. They can be flipping out and having a bipolar seizure. And you just keep your mind stayed on Jesus. You know, I, I'm not giving in to this. I'm not falling down to that. I'm not, I don't care. You go ahead and be crazy all by yourself. I ain't into your crazy. I didn't come to watch you. I didn't come to... There are people that are spiritually with special needs. <laughs> it's because they can't pull themselves in to hear what God has and really be free. And so if they can't be free, they don't want anybody else being free either. Oh, that's right. yes. How many of you know, if, if you, you probably all had friends like this at some time or another. If they were miserable, they were determined they were not going to be miserable by themselves. They were going to make you as unhappy as they were. Yeah. And if they couldn't make you as unhappy, they'd at least tell you what everybody else in the church supposedly said about you. <laughs> Amen? He's just... <laughs> well, at least they know I'm there because they're talking about me. Hallelujah. There was a time they didn't even know I was there. <laughs> so if they're talking at least about me, at least they knew I was there on something. you got to stay free. You can't allow other things. Here's what happens. The Bible says, whoever the sun sets free is where? Free. free indeed. And so if God sets you free, you already have freedom in Christ. If you don't have freedom in Christ, it is not God's fault. It's not somebody else's fault. It is your fault because you don't want to stay focused and stay free in Christ. There's going to be plenty of things to try to pull you down, distract you, and discourage you, and make you feel like, well, I just don't know how I'm going to get through this. I want to tell you, the way you can get through is say, you know what? Because God made me free, I'm free. Yes. Because he does the sunset free sure indeed, so I'm indeed free. Yes. I'm not going to allow somebody else's stuff to interfere with my peace because I have peace that literally passes up my understanding. Yes. I'm not going to allow something else to pull my joy from me because I have joy unspeakable and full of joy. Yes. The world didn't give this joy to me and the world can't take it away. So I'm just going to remain free in Christ. I refuse to let circumstances, whether they be physical, emotional, spiritual, or financial, Put me in a place where I am not free in Christ. Oh, hey, hey. You've got to make up your mind because those are the things that are going to come at you. Sometimes you don't have to raise your hand. There's some of you in here that have gone through financial attacks. The enemy comes in and tries to attack your finances. This is what happened. You keep doing exactly what you were doing before the attack came. And that way you can still keep doing the exact same thing you were doing after the attack's gone. Yeah. Because the enemy wants to come in and mess with you so much that he think, oh, I can't afford to give, I can't afford to, I can't even, I've had people tell me, I can't, I've met, this, this is the truth. I have, I've had people tell me, I can't afford the gas to get to church, but I saw on Facebook they were at the casino. <laughs> Evidently, you were trusted down that one. <laughs> it was, I went to the point <laughs> Evidently, they were trusting that the devil shall supply all my needs according to his riches in hell. 
Some people attack your body. He'll attack your health where you don't feel like coming. Yes. You, you think, man, the last thing that I want to do right now. I've got no small I don't want to see the I've got ready to personal life. Anybody fought an allergies right now? I felt like the world was spinning. My head hurt. I was tired. Uh, I had so much junk going, going on. I said, Lord, if it wasn't Shannon's birthday, I'd call him. <laughs> but so happened I talked to him earlier in the day, and he sounded worse than I did. And I thought, I can't do it. i got to go in there. Go on, suck it up, Pastor. <laughs> go on. <laughs> He'll attack your finances. He'll attack your health. He'll attack your emotions where I don't even want to go because those people don't really love me. <laughs> Ain't nobody really loves me. I don't know how I even go. I'm just a gigolo everywhere I go. Because <laughs> I ain't got no body. <laughs> and he'll attack you spiritually. Well, you either feel like you're not spiritual enough or you're too spiritual for everybody else. So there's going to be all these attacks. But guess what? And here's what I'm going to close with. All those things come to kill you, steal from you, and destroy you. Jesus said that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come and have it more abundantly. And so, if God's given us abundant life, it means we're already free. If you're busy worrying about the stealing and all this other stuff, you can't be free. You know what? you got to get free. Turn to somebody and say, you got to be free. That means, if you're going to be free, you can't be worried about what everybody else says, what everybody else thinks, and what everybody else is doing, what everybody else ain't doing. What somebody said about you, what somebody saw about you, what somebody wrote about you. You see something on Facebook, yeah, I know they're talking about me. That might be Delito. I'm one of those people, if I think people are talking about me, I'll call them up and say, hey, if you got something to say, say it to my face. I, I'd rather you tell me to my face. You know, you didn't, you didn't like the song I sang, you didn't, you didn't like this. I've had people. You know, especially later on, I've had people tell me, well, you know, all the way home from church, they just talked about how bad your sermon was and all that. Said, really? I've had people tell me that. And believe me, there have been times I left there where I thought my sermon sucked. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever worked in ministry, there's always going to be those times where you thought no matter how good you preached, I mean, you, you, you thought you gave it all you thought, and they sat there and looked at you like you just fell off the turkey wagon. <laughs> And you go home and you think, and then somebody writes back and says, you know, what you preached today was what set me free. And you think, well, you must have been really tied up. <laughs> if that set you free, you're not just too tight. It just happened to burst during my sermon tomorrow. I just keep going because I know that God set me free. The enemy came to kill me, steal, and destroy me. But Jesus came that I could have life and have it more about life. So I'm already free. Yes. I just this whole series is really not about telling you how to be free. It's about telling you how to exercise your freedom. Yes. That's really what it's about. How to exercise your freedom. Will you stand to your feet? <laughs> Father, we thank you for your word that is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our pathway. We thank you that you have already blessed us. Yes. You have already made us Come free. On, you have already done everything that you need that we can have life and have liberty. Yes. And so, Father, tonight we celebrate the freedom that we have in you. We thank you that you have new beginnings for us, that you have things that we have not even seen or dreamed about yet. But Father, we thank you not for the freedom that we have in you. Yes. We give you all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen.